Hi everyone, it's Nicole for Simon Says Stamp and welcome to my October 2022 edition of Making the Cut. Making the Cut is my monthly series where we talk about all things die cutting. This month we are going to be coloring die cuts with mica stains. This is an easy and effective way to add beautiful color to your die cuts. We're going to be using the Simon Says Stamp nested tags. I'm going to use the second smallest tag plus the hole reinforcer. We're going to be using the etched oak leaves from the Stamp Timber 2022 release, the Acorn Trio also from the Stamp Timber 2022 release, the Buckeye Leaf from the same release. We're going to be using the Sassy Thankful Stamp Set and Coordinating Dies. And that again is from the Stamp Timber release. And then from last year, we're gonna be using the Lined Leaves stamp set. We're gonna use a couple of the small sentiments from that. Plus, we're gonna be using an old letter background and a bubble wrap stencil that I am not showing. I did die cut all of my components before getting started out of white cardstock and I laid them out on a slimline card panel so I could kind of see how they were going to look. Then I took some Gathered Twigs Distress Oxide ink, added a little water from a distress sprayer. I am working on the Tim Holtz glass mat. It's super easy cleanup this way. And we are going to drag our tags or smoosh our tags into the ink to add our color. And this is gonna give us these vintagey kind of dirty looking tags. Maybe I shouldn't say dirty, grungy. <laughs> Grungy is probably a better word. And if you need more ink, add more ink, add more water. I just wanna add color to all of these. Now I am, I'm not working with a watercolor cardstock. You could, I'm using a heavyweight cardstock. So I did use a 110 pound weight Nina Smooth White cardstock. Part of the reason I picked a smooth cardstock rather than watercolor is it's going to be a little easier to stamp on. I am going to add some text stamping to the backgrounds of my tags, and for that I just felt it would work better, and the heavy cardstock holds up well. Here are the mica stains we're using. Those are three colors from this year, and plus I am gonna incorporate some colors from last year if you have them. Otherwise, mix and match with what you have. So we are going to take our Buckeye Leaf first. And I love to use a plastic, this is just a plastic like storage box that you would get at a discount store. I think I picked mine up at Walmart. It does have a lid, I don't use it, but I use this as my splatter box as it's reusable. You can rinse it out and use it over and over. And it's my favorite way to add color. That is some of the Burning Ember Halloween 2022 color of ink from Tim Holtz and his Distress Mica Stains. With using mica stains, you want to make sure they're very good and mixed up before you use them because you don't want the uh, mica flakes to clog the sprayer. So you'll see a lot of shaking. I colored the acorns, the base of the acorns, plus I splattered the Buckeye Leaf with last year's color Crooked Broomstick, which is kind of a, a brownish color um, that I just felt worked really good. Decayed would work in a pinch, and you're going to see me use Decayed here in a minute. This is Harvest Moon that I used on one of the etched oak leaves. I think that's maybe the medium size etched oak leaf. And... I want to add a um, splatter to it as well. I kind of like them to look a little imperfect. The whole goal here is just imperfection and really kind of having fun. And it, it just amazes me how you can take white cardstock and add some spray to it or ink to it and turn it into something completely new. This is a little flickering candle that I used here, which adds a little bit darker yellow color. That is a 2021 color. And next we are going to take 
some tart cranberry, which is one of this year's holiday colors. So don't be afraid to mix and match. This is a fall Halloween, not Halloween, pardon me, a fall Thanksgiving type of card or grateful, thankful card. You could change the greetings to make it work for whatever. But the tart cranberry is fantastic with these fall colors. And then this is a sprayer from last year that I actually clogged. And I wanted to show you, if you do that, mix it up really good, just like you would, until you can hear the ball in the container rolling around, I actually just take a paintbrush and paint on the color. Um, you could kind of mix and match sprayers or buy a new sprayer if you needed to. I didn't. So in a pinch, that works great. And I just wanted to share a little tip that if the bad thing happens and you do clog your sprayer, you can always do that. Now, I even took a little burning ember and splattered over that green, which the green is holly branch. And then for the top of the acorns, this is where we're gonna use Decayed, which is a 2022 color. And it doesn't show really great here, but it's enough different that I really like it on the acorn. And like I said, in a pinch, you could definitely, um, if you don't have last year's Crooked Broomstick, I think Decayed would be a really great alternative. So I'm adding color to the rest of those. Now, they're not gonna dry super great in a plastic box because the obviously the leftover product is not going to absorb into it like it would a cardboard box. So I like to take some nice uh, pointy tweezers and I like to pull them out and lay them out on my work surface so that they can completely air dry. And I'm just gonna pull everything that I colored out, set it aside to air dry while we work on our background. So while the images we're gonna be using for our card are super beautiful, I think it's very important to make your background interesting and a nice supporting cast, if you will, to really set off the images and the tags we're gonna be adding to our card. I'm gonna take some Distress Oxide ink in antique linen and the bubble wrap stencil from Simon Says Stamp and we're going to ink up our background panel. You might notice I'm not going all the way to the edge of the panel and that is on purpose. I definitely want this to be super imperfect, just like everything else on our card. And the bubble wrap adds a fun texture. There's lots of different slimline style stencils out there that you could use, or you could even piece together um, a couple of smaller stencils, but just something that's going to add some sort of decorative pattern, tone on tone pattern, preferably to the background. And then once I have the stenciling, I'm gonna go over the whole thing lightly with the same antique linen look. So it's very tone on tone, but it does add color to the entire slimline background panel. And here's how our tags are gonna look on there. Now I decided to grunge up the background a little bit more. And so we are going to take a little bit of spray. And I believe this is decayed. And I really had to work to get it mixed up. Apparently I'd let it sit for a little too long. This might be Crooked Broomstick. I might be wrong about that. Either one would work. And you wanna just kind of spritz the background, not all over, but I just like that grungy, like something got spilled and splattered on it. Next, I am gonna remove the foam insert from my Misty. So we're gonna set the background aside now to dry, and it does dry pretty quickly. And I have some of the Misty sticky mats here prepped in my Misty, and I am going to take the old letter background stamp from Simon Says Stamp, and we want to stamp some text on our tags. They've uh, had plenty of time, they've dried, so now we're going to place them somewhere here, and the sticky mat holds them in place perfectly. You can see that I've used this sticky mat before because it's, it's stained even with this old letter. And we are going to take some ground espresso Distress Oxide ink, ink up our background stamp and stamp it on here. And I purposely picked a background stamp that doesn't have words you can really read. I just want this to be more of a layering background element. So I divided it up into two sections and I stamped two tags at a time. Now notice that one of the tags is upside down and I stamped it that way on purpose. I always love when I'm doing a grouping of tags to have one of them going the 
wrong way, but I want the text to be going the right way. So that is why I stamped it like that. Next, I'm gonna take the same ground espresso distress off distress oxide ink and I'm going to go around the edges of my leaves just a little bit not all the way around but adding an extra little punch of color kind of around the bottom edge or so to give them a really finished look anything I can do to grunge them up just a little bit more and apparently grunge up my fingers and it really makes a huge difference. And again, working on the glass mat is fantastic because it's super easy to clean up. And then our beautiful big buckeye leaf. It's so pretty. I think this would even be pretty in like decor pieces. It's a nice big leaf. So now I've kind of cleaned up my work surface and laid things out. It's time to stamp my sentiments. I'm gonna take a larger sentiment, Let Us Give Thanks from the Sassy Thankful stamp set. And then I also stamped a couple of the phrases from Lined Leaves, but keep in mind, I actually changed my mind about this, so I'll show you how I changed that in a minute. We are gonna be stamping Let Us Give Thanks on Dark Chocolate Simon Says Stamp cardstock. I did prep it with a powder tool first. And because our card is not a card that is featuring bright white, I'm gonna to choose to use cream embossing powder from Simon Says Stamp instead of white. And that tiny little bit of difference is incredible. It is so pretty, you guys, in real life. Cream is one of my favorite embossing colors, especially for fall kind of cards. We're going to heat emboss this and then die cut Let Us Give Thanks with the coordinating die. Now, if you don't need a Thanksgiving card, but maybe you want to turn this into a fall themed, uh, just regular thank you card or a uh, birthday card or a thinking of you card. I mean, it could be anything. Simply swap out your greetings. This card would work for many different fall themed occasions very easily. Make sure that you buff away with a dry cloth or a paper towel or maybe even your finger that remaining powder on your cardstock. Now while I'm die cutting, I decided to go ahead and die cut the whole reinforcers for my tags from the dark chocolate cardstock. And this is where I decided even after I had die cut my little greetings, you can see them there on the on this top of the screen. I don't like them in dark chocolate. I feel like they take away with that dark chocolate background. It takes away from our main greeting. So to combat that, I decided to stamp my greetings on white cardstock using ground espresso plus the happy Thanksgiving from the sassy thankful stamp set that I was planning on using anyway. We're gonna die cut all of these with sentiment label dies from Simon Says Stamp, and then of course, we're gonna grunge them up a little bit too. So I'm using two different sizes of the sentiment labels dies, which are my go-to favorite, so much so that I don't even keep them um, in a regular storage sleeve. I just keep them on a magnet right next to my die cutting machine for easy use at all times. We're gonna die cut all of these. And I hold them in place with a little post-it tape or a little low tack tape or washi tape, whatever you like to use. Flip the die around, line it up with the other side and die cut the other one. Then our other side, we're gonna do that for all three. Then we're gonna take antique linen and go around the edges of these little cardstock um, sentiment strips, pardon me, and we're going to add them to our card and grunging them up just makes them work with our card much better. And I'm gonna hold it in place with my tweezers. It kept moving on me, it's pretty tiny. And then I'm gonna clean my work surface as well because we don't want that ink transferring anywhere. So let's go ahead and start putting it all together. I always like to lay it out, make sure everything is where I want it, and then we're just going to start gluing things in place. So I'm going to glue my leaf 
to the center, the red leaf, pardon me, and this is the etched oak leaf to the center of the first tag. We're going to pop up with foam adhesive with gratitude in the center of that and add the whole reinforcer. For the second tag, we're also going to add the whole reinforcer, and this tag has the most going on. So we're going to layer the remaining two etched oak leaves, and then we're going to assemble our acorns. And I'm just using the two little acorns that are attached here. The third will be used elsewhere. And we're also going to then add a little twine around the top of our acorns and glue those in place over the leaves. And this is a little May Arts twine available right here at Simon Says Stamp. I've had this spool forever, but it comes in so handy if you're needing a little bit of twine for a card design. I'm going to be utilizing some acrylic blocks throughout to help hold things flat while the liquid glue dries. I'm also using the new foam tape from Simon Says Stamp to attach my tags to my card base. I'm purposely not lining them up straight up and down, but instead tilting them at angles. For the remaining two tags, this is where the Buckeye leaf kind of transitions over those. So while I want it to have some decoration with the leaf, this is also where our sentiment is going to be placed. So I need to kind of do these two tags at the same time. And remember, one of them is upside down, so the whole reinforcer will go down at the bottom. And then I'm just going to kind of assemble those and then add some glue and then we need to figure out where our sentiment's gonna go. Now, originally I thought I'd pop up the sentiment with foam tape, but I decided to do the tags instead, and so I pulled the foam tape off the back of Let Us Give Thanks and glued it in place and kind of had one portion of the leaf go over the sentiment, like tucked it into the leaf, basically, which looks a little more natural and would have been hard to do with the foam tape on the back. We want to tie our twine into a bow for our second tag that we were working on. We will tie it into a bow, trim the ends, and glue, or adhere, pardon, that tag in place. I also want to add the Happy Fall to that tag and place foam tape on the back of Happy Thanksgiving and pop that right underneath Let Us Give Thanks. We also want to add that remaining little acorn to the tag over on the very right to kind of balance it out because definitely the left side is a little heavier with embellishment. And even though we have the large buckeye leaf here on the right, I think that last little acorn will really kind of balance everything beautifully. Once we have all of our die cut pieces in place, it's time to embellish. I'm gonna use some Trinity Stamps Coffee Bean Hearts, and then I'll be using some other little pearl gems from Trinity Stamps in a couple of neutral tone colors and scatter those little baubles throughout. So there's gonna be uh, several of these little pearls all over the card and I'm using a little dab of glue and the embellishment wand to easily pick them up and pop them in place. I placed one heart underneath Happy Thanksgiving and then I thought another heart looked really cute on one of the acorns. Finally, we wanna take some lawn trimmings twine. You could also use the May Arts twine I used earlier, but this is a little thicker and I am going to add some little tag ties, I guess, string, twine, to the top of some of these tags. So the three tags that don't already have something are what's going to get them. I'm going to leave the tag with the leaves and the acorns alone. I didn't feel like it needed something extra there. And I'm simply sliding the twine through, knotting it, and cutting it kind of short. You don't want to leave these super long and that just finishes off our design perfectly. Then we're gonna take a Simon Says Stamp slimline card base and we are going to adhere our panel right to our card base. And there is the finished card. So pretty and the mica stains are a fantastic easy way to add lots of texture.
Thank you guys so much for joining me today. Please be sure to visit the Simon Says Stamp blog for more information. The supplies used are listed right here under the video for your convenience. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time. Hi there, I'm Heidi, Simon's mama and founder at simonsaysstamp.com. Thank you so much for watching our video. If you like what you just saw, be sure to press the thumbs up and subscribe to see more great content.